Hi, welcome to another edition of Design Spark Ask the Expert. Today we're going to be talking to Omron about condition monitoring, and I have David Breckel from Omron. Hi, David. Would you like to say hello to Design Spark? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Breckel. I'm a market development manager for Omron, and I'm one of our panel solution specialists here in the UK. Great. So that, let's get into it, um, David. So condition monitoring obviously is a all about maintenance. Now, maintenance can fall into three different types of category. Uh, the first one, it could be fixed when broken, which is not ideal, or preventative or scheduled, and then finally, predictive maintenance. Given that the first one is not really an option for running a successful facility, what can you tell me about the main differences between preventative and predictive maintenance? Well, preventative maintenance is your more traditional time-based maintenance strategy. So maintenance takes place on a fixed schedule, regardless of the wear and tear or condition or usage of the machine. So typically there'll be a pre-planned downtime and a maintenance engineer or a technician will take a machine offline and go through a, a pre-prepared checklist. Certain components might be cleaned and repaired and others might be preventively or, or preemptively replaced. Um, this is still a common strategy and it does reduce downtime, but it's quite costly it's time consuming and it requires skilled maintenance technicians or engineers to perform the actual checks. Uh, predictive maintenance is condition based monitoring. So it uses IoT based sensors to gain real time 24 7 data about the machine. And this is then analyzed to determine when your maintenance period is going to be. Um, so essentially with this, what you'll have is uh, reduced downtime in terms of inspection and testing. You'll have a reduction in the repairs and replacements of parts because they're possibly not worn. And it also will free up your maintenance or your engineers for other tasks. So essentially, predictive maintenance means uh, less downtime and less cost for the customer. Great, okay, so so that, that, that makes sense then. So in, in terms of predictive versus preventative, one of the main differences is that cost association where you don't necessarily need to take something offline if it's working correctly. In your predictive maintenance, your sensors are telling you that everything is okay with the facility. Is that right? That's correct. Um, and, and obviously with the data there, you, you can obviously pick up things at an earlier stage because if you have a preventative maintenance, it might be every 12 months, it could be every 18 months. With these IoT based sensors, you can check it as often or as little as you like. So, you know, you might pick things up on a monthly basis. So you can actually pick up a, an issue with the machine long before it stops production. OK, so that, that point you made also about 24 seven condition monitoring, you know, bringing the, um, the, the sensor data or the process data um, to implement a predictive maintenance strategy. But I, I guess there are things that are probably not quite so straightforward. So how would you explain, for, for example, how you bring the different layers of data from the equipment or the process centers through to the enterprise level or the analytical and the decision layer? Well, there's a number of different uh, sort of products and solutions on the market. But from the uh, sort of data analysis point of view, there's really two types. You have what you call cloud computing, and that's where the data is collected locally on the machine. It's then transmitted through the internet to remote servers in the crowd in the cloud, and they process and obviously perform the analysis and then send the results back to your, your maintenance systems or your factory management system. The second type is what we would call edge computing, uh, and this is what we use at Omron, and this is where the, the data is collected and it's processed at the machine level. So either in the control panel or on the machine itself. Um, in this situation, you're only really outputting the actual result. You know, does it need maintenance? What's the condition of the machine? Um, Omron, as a, as a business, we use some widely available industrial protocols like uh, Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP. So that's used then to communicate with the, the factory management and the maintenance level. The edge technology has a lot of advantages. Um, it's more flexible because obviously with the larger cloud based systems, you have to put a lot of IT infrastructure in and major engineering works. Yeah, if it's processed locally on the machine, you can start out small. It's more secure because obviously your data is not going to leave your factory. It's not going out into the Internet where it goes beyond and you have issues, okay. with firewalls yeah. and data connection. Um, it also doesn't require the 24 seven Internet connection to work because the processing is done locally because that's another thing that can cause issues with it. And it reduces down the factory data because you're again only sending the judgment or the actual results into the factory network rather than moving the raw data along 24 seven. Right, okay. Yeah, so in, in terms of, let me just get this right. So what we're talking about in, in terms of maybe the uh, biggest opportunities is it's definitely looking like retrofit solutions are quite a, a big opportunity. 
Uh, you don't need to go through the expense of a major overhaul. And we're looking at edge computing for, for that kind of uh, application for that benefit to come through. Is that a good starting point, do you think? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, obviously, 75% of businesses experience on plan downtime. Uh, sometimes the cost can run easily into the tens of thousands. You know, it can bring a production line to a standstill or if it's part of a larger process. You could end up with a situation where you produce substandard parts or product that doesn't meet your quality levels. So having this edge local processing for your maintenance really makes it very easy to retrofit. So there's a low barrier to entry to starting to have a predictive maintenance system. It's not a really right. big investment. So typically we would start small on a site level. We'd find something that was critical to the process, usually running 24-7. Um, a typical application for this would be something like a, a motor or a fan or a pump system as they're constantly running. We can build a system around that. That can then either be fed into a larger system or for instance a plc on an individual basis and then it can be scaled up as time goes on okay so i just want to touch on motors if, if we can go back to to, to motors because one of the areas that um obviously a lot of industries driven on motors you know they're they're big uh a big influence in terms of the amount of uh, efficiency and throughput particularly if you're looking on production lines and conveyor systems and if a motor does actually go down it can be very very costly what what is it about um, motors that we need to understand about you know them not working efficiently? What what are the the kind of cues to to give um, sense points, for example, when a motor is about to fail, for example, or time to do some preventative or predictive maintenance on those? Well, the condition and performance of a motor generally does degrade over time due to the aging process. You know, as we mentioned before, they're they're quite often in situations where they might be running twenty four seven. There's lots of things that can cause failure on a motor. There can be issues with, for example, uh, imbalance on the load that's connected to it. Uh, the bearing breakdown is another big thing, whether it's yeah. bearing scratch or the bearing seizing, the bearings failing inside. Um, another common issue is uh, insulation resistance can break down. So on the rotor and the stator, you've obviously got insulation. This can break down due to excessive heat. It could be condensation in the motor causing corrosion, for example. When this breaks down, not only will the motor fail, but there's a risk of electric shock. Uh, there can be conditions where the motor itself is overloaded, which causes heat and can also cause uh, vibration. Um, what we typically do with the, the sort of condition monitoring sensors is um, we're looking at things like the, the waveform. So if there's an issue inside there, we can use what's called current analysis, and we can use this to determine at a very early stage if there's going to be a failure, long before it might be obvious from heat or noise, if yeah. the motor itself. So, so an example of that of, of a system would be if you had an imbalance in a, in, in, on a load on the shaft, essentially what would happen is there'd be a gap between the rotor and the stator. This would cause variances in the current and we can measure the frequency components inside it and detect the errors and the imbalance. Yeah. On top of that, obviously we have other sensors which can detect the surface temperature and the vibration. Um, one of the other advantages we can do with motors is Insulation resistance, which we mentioned before, where that can break down and cause a risk of electric shock and damage. That has traditionally been quite a difficult thing to check. So the motors had to be taken out of service, disconnected, and then typically a, scaled, a skilled engineer or technician would then have to put a mega across from each phase and possibly put a thousand volts in and do these checks. It's now possible with modern IoT based sensors to do this in real time. So as long as the motor's not running, we can squirt in 50 volts on some models or we can use a CT on others. But that yeah. means you can essentially check it almost on an hourly basis. So you can pick up that degradation at a much, much earlier time. So you can get a lot of insights into the condition of the motor. So with the K6CM, as we can essentially detect all these issues, we can analyze it on site very quickly and then report it back into your, your factory maintenance system. Yeah. OK, so, so you're, you're constantly monitoring. You don't take the motor offline. You don't need to remove and it, it's doing all that monitoring all with the Depending motor in the situ. Models, uh, that's correct. I mean, so one of the uh, the models we have that um, essentially uses 50 volts, which is much safer than the 1000 volts. All you simply do is it's permanently wired into the contactor or the inverter drive that drives the motor. And as long as it receives a signal to say it's not energized, it can then squirt 50 volts in. This can be done remotely through software or from the machine, and then it will report back the results, essentially automating the test process. So you, you've de-skilled it and you can use it as often as you want. So you can have very regular checks instead of six monthly or yearly or two yearly. Yeah. That's great because uh, what you were saying earlier about the percentage of unplanned downtime 
uh, when we're talking about motor driven applications, they can be very costly. You know, if, if you are not prepared and a motor goes offline, particularly if it's feeding the main conveyor system in a, a distribution facility, for example, or a process line, very costly. So yeah, that sounds that sounds really uh, an interesting product. Absolutely. So um, one of the, the other things I want to talk about, um, and, and sometimes this, this is an area which is often overlooked within um, maintenance, is the actual control panel itself. Uh, I, I've seen various test procedures formed on control panels where maybe the control panel was opened and it's a quick visual inspection or there's an IR gun just pointed at it for a, for a very short period of time and then the panel's closed again. What, what else uh, can you tell us about uh, Omron and how you guys can address some of the issues that you may see around control panels? Yeah, certainly. Well, if I could uh, share a couple of slides at this point. Um, Temperature in a control panel is, is, is a really critical component for, uh, for long term reliability. Um, what you'll often find is the, uh, the temperature within a control panel is typically 10 to 15 degrees higher than the ambient temperature of the, the factory or site it's in. So if you imagine in a, a typical factory where it may reach 30, 35, maybe even 40 in some climates during, during the summer, you could have 50, 55 degrees Celsius inside the panel. Yeah. This has a big effect on the longevity of components. So typically when you have a component, it will have a, a temperature scale. It might be minus 10 to 40, minus 10 to 50, 55. It'll have an upper limit for its operating range. As a rule of thumb with electronics, for every 10 degrees you run it above that over its lifespan, you're half its lifetime. Yeah. So if, it, if you had one that's just rated at 40 and you run it at 50, you may instead get 10 years, get five years. If you increase it by another 10, it might only be two and a half years. So it's important to monitor in terms of longevity, the, the temperature within the panel. The other reason why you need to be very um, careful in terms of sort of temperaturizing the panel is it can also be indicative of a fault. So you may have something like a loose connection, a high resistance connection. These can take a long time sometimes to be detected, and obviously that can then cause catastrophic failure of a component, which can bring down yeah. your panel. Um, what we offer, rather than using a traditional thermostat or a thermistor, is we have a, a product for our IoT maintenance called the K6PM. And that's based around an infrared thermal camera that you mount inside the, the panel door. This offers a number of advantages because instead of looking at the overall ambient temperature in the panel, you can actually map out all of the devices and components. So essentially you can set it into 16, a grid of 16 different uh, sensing areas. Yeah. The reason why you'd want to do that is obviously the, the upper and lower thermal limits can vary from product to product. You know, certain products like a solid, an SSR, for example, a solid state relay will run considerably hotter than a standard relay. Yeah. Um, the other advantage you have when using these sort of thermal camera systems is you're not just looking at one instance of temperature in time. It can work out the rate of change. Um, so then you can, you can actually trend and work out if a component's within normal limits, if it's heating up too much, and it gives you a very good indication of, again, when it's going to fail from a predictive maintenance point of view. Yeah, and the other advantage you have with it is it's, it, you can also tune out the background temperature because sometimes if it's a high ambient temperature that could mask a fault on a component. So, so by using this sort of technology, you can predict and detect failure at a much earlier stage for planning and maintenance. And again, these devices work on Ethernet IP. So again, it comes back into your factory management system and those calculations are done. It's an edge calculation done in the unit itself. Yeah, so you, you have software that you can you can use with that then to actually pinpoint uh, and give very specific values for each of those component areas like you were talking on the uh, the 16 box grid. Yes, you can use the software to manipulate what you want or the limits that you want to see within that area. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a PC based tool and, and you can link up to 32 of the cameras together into the software so you can use it to cover very large panels or multiple right. panels and all be fed back to the same PC tool. Yeah. That, that that sounds really uh, that sounds quite in, ingenious actually, and it's certainly different to some of the the uh, the maintenance uh, kind of practices that I've seen before for, for uh, that, that, that's control exactly panels. By opening a opening a door and using a thermal gun, all you're going to get is a spot temperature at that moment. Exactly. So. so this this is much more intelligent, much more uh, user friendly by the sounds of it as well. But then also what you were talking about catastrophic failure if you have some. Uh, uh, thermal damage within in that cabinet again like we were saying on the the motor example it could take the whole facility or the whole installation down that's correct yeah um, and probably one of the other critical elements to mention when we're looking at uh, print, um, predictive maintenance within control panels is the power supply if if you lose the power supply within a panel 
I mean, you may have UPS backup for a little bit short autonomy, but you're, it's going to take down the panel, stop your PLCs, your control, and again, it's going to stop the uh, yeah. stop the system and bring down production. Um, one of the other products that we've we've put together is uh, what we call the SAP KX, which is essentially a, an IoT power supply. So it's fitted with an Ethernet IP link again, and the advantage of this is essentially you can get a, a wide range of diagnostics and data out of it. It can tell you the voltage, it can tell you the current, it can tell you its peak current, its, uh, its load, you can work out how long it's been running for. The reason why this is important is power supplies generally have quite a long service life. You could expect yeah. 10 or 15 years from them. But what will often happen when it's near the end of its life is it doesn't immediately fail completely. You don't get a catastrophic failure. What will happen is the electrolytic capacitors will break down, which can cause voltage fluctuations. So being able to accurately determine when to replace it at a stage where it's not going to stop production is really, really valuable. This can be, again, through Ethernet IP sent to a PLC or a controller. But again, we have um, some PC monitoring software. So again, this will allow you to monitor multiple machines and perform trending and analysis, which greatly increases and improves the predictive maintenance. And there's a, a, a the final slide there just to show you is actually a visualization of one of the power supplies that will be connected to the PC software. So essentially, this works out the uh, the actual load to, um, in terms of its ambient temperature, and then you can work out essentially how much extra capacity you've had if it's under strain. And it makes yeah. it very easy then to see if you need to up the size to maybe a larger frame size to get more reliability. So there's a number of solutions we can offer, you know, both in temperature and within the panel and obviously monitoring of, of individual components and their power draw, et cetera, through the power supply. Great. David, I really thank you for your time today. It's been interesting to have this uh, talk to you about condition monitoring. It's an area, obviously, which is uh, obviously very relevant, but the products that you've described today really do um, offer users um, lots of benefits as well. And, you know, as much as possible, we must try to ensure that there, there are no unplanned uh, <laughs> Uh, maintenance dropouts, for example, and, and those three products that you mentioned today really do uh, really do add to uh, a good arsenal of, of products to for our users to consider within their operations. So, once again, I really like to thank you for your time today, and I hope we can talk on Design Spark again real soon. Definitely, and thank you very much for the opportunity to come and talk to you today.